Night Journey Church. Happy, happy Mother's Day to all of our gorgeous mommies. Did you guys get one of those great little necklaces when you came in, a little gift from us? I saw some of the mommies walking around with the mommy mojitos from the back. Of course, they were, they were clean. Um, well, we just love our moms, and we just want to invite you guys to just come sit back, relax today. Um, we hope that you feel not just today, but every day, that we love you, we honor you, we support you, and we cheer you on, and we hope you hear it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. Well, we're going to jump right in. Let's just all close our eyes and go before the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we just thank you so much. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for our moms, Lord Jesus. We ask that you bless them, Father God. We ask that their children rise up and call them blessed in Jesus' name, Lord. And we thank you for this message. We ask that it penetrates the hearts, Father God, as we invite you here to come in our presence, but Father God. We have a awesome expectation for what you're going to do in and through our lives today, Father God. So we, we're, we invite you here. We thank you for being here. And we just, you know, we cancel out any scheme of the devil, Lord Jesus. We just cancel out. We um, abort, Father God. We dismantle any distractions, Father God. We're asking for new eyes. We want to see into the spiritual realm like we've never seen before, Father God. We know our battle, and we know that we're in a war, Father God. And we just ask that you help us, equip us today, that we will move every mountain in our way and stand on it victorious in the things of you. In Jesus' name we pray, and we all say amen. All righty. Well, y'all, before I said yes to Eric about this message, he did not tell me what it was going to be about, so I'm just going to tell you. It's about cleaning house on Mother's Day. <laughs> is that a little ironic or what? The good thing is it's not tips on how to scrub your tub. It is spiritual warfare, how to spiritually clean out our homes and our houses. Amen? And I promise you, ladies, if we do apply this to our lives, it'll be the best Mother's Day gift you've ever received in your entire life. But you don't have to be a mom. If you have a roof of any kind, this information is for you. Amen? Amen. All right. So we know a couple weeks ago, Eric, Pastor Eric had told us and shared with us how Christians cannot be possessed, right? Only through the Holy Spirit can possess us. Um, and that we, but that we can be oppressed, right? We know the word of God. Jesus did not say cast off the spirits. He said, cast out the spirit. Amen. So what I want to do today well, first off, I want to tell you guys this. I don't think everything is a demon. I don't think everything is demonic. I know that there's a physical healing and there's spiritual healing that we may need that I don't call everything a demon, okay? Um, but there's tons of doorways. We know that, say, if you have a heart condition, but you eat poor, we're not going to blame a demon on that. We're going to pour it. We're going to blame your poor eating habits, right? Um, so... There's so many open doors that we can open through our life. Sometimes we recognize it, sometimes we don't, right? They're through behaviors or um, just sin, sin, things that we do that we bring into our life. So doorways are open through behaviors, traumas that we have, um, unforgiveness, resentments, rejection, anger, hatred, bitterness. Um, these things hinder us from being all that we are called to be in Christ. And they also hold us back and allow spirits to interfere with our how with our home and our health and our lives and raising our children and being married and just living right um our lives we take a hit because we were born in sin we know this we know that as we walk through life we're hard on our bodies we're hard life gets tough and doorways get open and what i really want to do today is shed some light on how we can close those doors okay um you know when we're sick, when I, when I, if I have a um, headache, I first pray over my headache before I take an aspirin because I know that a lot of the doorways I've opened, a lot of stresses in our life come from those spirits. Amen? Um, we've been learning about for a couple of weeks. We know that Pastor Eric, we just finished the War in the Heavenlies, all on spiritual warfare. We know right now we're doing the being free. We want to be set free. And we know the Word of God tells us that he came to set the captives free. Set the captives of what? 
these spirits that we're going to be learning about, okay? So I'm hoping to shed some light on the spiritual realm concerning doorways that we may have opened, I said that again, um, in our home, in our temple, who we are, right? Um, Satan's been lying to the church for a really, really long time. Um, and probably you're going to hear yourself say, oh, we don't need to go that far. Or, I don't want to be one of those Christians. Or, man, you got to be so legalistic. But the truth is, the word, the God, we're, the word of God, he means what he says in his word. Amen? Um, all right. So Satan's been lying to us for a long time. The church does not look much different than the world does. Right? We know our divorce rate's probably the same. Our wayward children, once they hit 19, they go out and they do the same thing that our next-door neighbor did when they were smoking pot with their, with their own children. Right? We recognize this, and it's sad. It's disheartening. Um, and it shouldn't be that way. So hopefully today, I want you to know that, guess what? We don't give Satan credit by talking about him. We don't give him a, a, a foothold in our life. But the bottom line is, is that he is real. We are in a war, whether you want to know it or not, and we need to know how to fight him. We need to be equipped. If you come into my house, you come on my property, I'm not going to let just anybody come on into my house. You're going to get shot probably, right? Well, I feel the same way about Satan. He is not going to get a foothold in my house or in my family. Amen? His job is to come to kill, steal, and destroy I'm not having it, and either shall you. Listen to what John 10, 10 says. It says, the thief's purpose is to kill, steal, and destroy. My purpose is, which is the Lord's, is to give them a rich and satisfying life. So whose plans and purposes do we want to follow? That's right, y'all get an A. All right. So um, some of you are here, and you're, like I said, you're going to hear this, and you're going to say, that's not for me. I just want to be one of those Christians that come in on Sunday, sing a couple songs, and leave. I don't need to be all a holy roller, right? But I'm telling you, God is not taking half-hearted commitments and partial obedience. He's not doing it. His word's clear all through that he's not, it's not acceptable, he tells us. Amen? All right. So we can't be natural. We can't be carnal. We can't be a counterfeit. We can't be lukewarm. We can't be whitewashed. We've got to be about his business. We are, an, we are not natural. We are supernatural. And y'all, our spirit goes somewhere for all eternity. It's going to end up somewhere. And every single day we have a choice on where we're going to plant ourselves and always remember who's watching us and who's not coming because we like to do things our way, right? Our children's watching. Our neighbors are watching. Our extended family's watching. Our co-workers are watching. We have the answer. We have the word of God. It's our map. And we know how to walk this out. Amen? Amen? All right. The Bible tells us that my people perish from the lack of knowledge. That's scary because half of us aren't opening up our Bible, if we're honest, right? We know that because 2020 showed us. It showed us a glimpse of the true church and who's on board and who is not. How many people were walking in fear? How many people weren't standing on the word of God who was not trusting God? We got woke, didn't we? So I, I feel like this is coming out a little harsh on Mother's Day. It's not my intent, but I just love you all. And I just really, um, I, my heart is set apart for for just really sharing the true gospel, the true word of God, God's purposes, God's plans. And if we need to be woke, we need to be woke, right? He says, we'll know his will. Amen. He says, we'll know his will when we know his word. It's the most important thing we can do. Listen, in Luke eleven twenty three, 23, it says, whoever is not with me is against me. E -e -e. So that war, you think you're not in, you're either for him or you're not. Um, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. Yee, God means business, y'all. His road is narrow, right? We cannot be wa whitewashed anymore. In a minute, I'm going to share a lot, a, real, a whole bunch of information. I'm going to go down it really quickly. Um, there's more than this, but this is what I came up with. Um, of doorways, like I said, that we need to know about and that we need to close, okay? But before I do, I want to tell you guys a story about where I was set on fire for this. This is my jam. This whole um, thing that I'm sharing with you, it's my heart. And this is why. I'm just going to tell you the story. All right. I was a 21-year-old girl. I had just gotten saved. Y'all, most of you know that I faked being a Christian for about six months because Eric was on fire. I was waiting for him to get over his Jesus phase. And, but at this point, I was probably more around 22 years old. 
old. Both of my babies were upstairs um, taking a nap, and I was outside laying in the sun reading a spiritual warfare book, the first thing I ever read on spiritual warfare. And on one of the chapters, I had a story about this family who were awesome in the church. They were showing up. They were tithing. They were serving. They were um, in ministry, prayer warriors. Um, but Satan was really mad at them because people kept cut the cult kept coming to this church and getting saved. Well, Satan did not like that. So he got the local um, cult members to do an incantation to go over to this family's house and wreck havoc. Uh, the, the assignment was to make their kids argue, to make their marriage, you know, disastrous, angry, aggressiveness in there, and to ultimately kill this couple because too many people were coming out of the occult because of their ministry, right? Well, in the book, it shared that these, these demons went to go into the house, and the house was wrapped around with these linking angels, taller than two stories, taller than a telephone pole, standing, linking arms, and these demons could not get in. No matter what way they tried to get in, they could not get in the house. And they spoke and said, if we don't hurry up and, and get in this house and break through, we cannot go back to Satan. He'll torture us because we didn't do the assignment he had. Well, little old 22-year-old Mary Jo probably I like remember holding that book to me and I said, what am I reading? This whole world, this whole Christianity that I, I knew nothing about, right? That um, I just said, I remember sitting there. I didn't know how to pray. I was a little, little new Christian, but I said, Lord, if these angels are real, if this is real and I can pray a prayer over my house that can protect my marriage and protect my children, I'm praying it. And so I said, whatever kind of prayer I knew how to pray at the time and never even thought about it again. To be honest, I felt kind of foolish because I didn't know what I was really doing. Well, lo and behold, two, like a week and a half later, my sisters were being dropped off at my house from one of the youth leaders. Well, when they came to the door, the youth leader came in. I was chit-chatting with her. I didn't know who she was. Well, she came and she was asking me all these questions at my dining room table, like how long have I been a believer and just trying to get the temperature of my maturity as a Christian. And I remember telling her, I love Jesus. Well, she said to me, she goes, well, the reason why I'm asking you these questions is because when I drove in and we parked our car, she says, and she looks at my sliding glass door and there's a tree there. She goes, do you see that branch right there? And I'm like, yeah. She goes, there's a demon sitting on that branch and it's exhausted. It keeps trying to get into your house, but it can't do it because there's these linking angels standing there side by side. Yes. Standing side by side. Linking, linking, she said taller, she used the same words that I prayed, taller than the telephone pole, taller than my two-story house, that those angels were linked up and that demon could not get into my house any which way. Well, you guys have got to know, I sat at that table and I just looked at her, I was like, I didn't tell my husband I prayed that, I didn't tell anybody I prayed that, how does this lady know that I prayed this? And it dawned on me, oh my goodness, demons are real! Yes, angels are real. My little tiny prayer mattered. God heard it. And I, I was just blown away. I sat there. I cried. She sat at my table for another five hours. We became best friends. And, um, and the truth is, it changed the way I saw things. Guess what I've been doing for 29 years? I've been praying for linking angels around my house, over my home, over my car, over my property, over this whole church area, over the children's church rooms, over every single door that you walk in this place. I I pray, I anoint, amen. I pray, I anoint, and I believe. And along with that, when I learned about the armor of God, I said, kids, this is what you're wearing every day of your life. And every day of my children's life, I can tell you their lives and my extended family by name, 25 people. I pray every morning for all of them to be wrapped in the armor of God because our war is not against the flesh and blood, but about the principalities, the things you can't see. That This is more, the, the spiritual realm is more real than this table, more real than this building. There's demonic influences outside of this building trying to get in, trying to wreak havoc, driving in your car next to you, trying to make you crash, trying to get into our teenagers, trying to get into our marriages, and we're not doing anything about it. We're letting, letting a robber come into our home and, and, and take our things. Well, he can't have it anymore. So today, I'm going to be reading a list of things, and I ask you guys, please, pray in your heart as I read it. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you for you to discern these things that you may have opened inside of your life
life that you may have opened inside of your temple alone, actions, habits that you may have done, or just as simple as accursed items that we brought into our home. Amen? I'm going to go super quick. It's a lot, you guys. And it's not all of it. I can go on for hours with this list. But I, I kind of shirt it up as quickly as I can. Um, here I go. This little section is necromancy, which we learned a couple weeks ago. That's communicating with the dead. And it's, it's, it's you'll, you'll see. It says Ouija board. Y'all, we know that's not okay. Tarot cards, horoscopes, voodoo, acupuncture. Do you know that acupuncture, before um, that needle is even distributed, it's been cursed. They say a demonic blessing over it as they're manufacturing it. So your acupuncturist might be awesome and wonderful, but that is a demonic healing that Christians should not be about. Amen? A lot of Christians come up to me and they're excited because they're healed. I'm like, oh my God, that's a demonic healing. And you don't want a demonic healing because we have the Holy Spirit, fire to heal us. Amen? All right. Magic. We know that. Palm reading, fortune telling, tea leaves, um, astrology. You guys, we see you walking around with all these shirts that say Capricorn and Libra. You are not a Libra. You're not a Cancer. You're a child of God. Amen? <laughs> Throw those shirts away. We don't wear them. We don't have them. If you have the charm, talk. It. Get rid of it. Y'all look worried. I don't want you to be worried because greater is he that is in us than him that's in the world, right? No weapon formed against us can prosper. Amen? All right. I have a great story for this. You guys know the story in the Bible about the demoniac? Y'all know how you walk around all nakey nakey in the tombs and stuff? All right. Well, we're going to read this story really quickly. It's so powerful. It's in Luke 8, 27. It says, when Jesus had stepped out on the land, there met him a man from a city who had demons. For he, for a long time, he had worn no clothes. Y'all, he naked. And he had no, he, you, and not only that, but you guys, we would think he's insane. We would just say he's cray cray and put him away. But look what the presence of God and the power of God does in this guy's life. And he had not lived in a house, but amongst the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and said in a loud voice, what have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? He says, I beg you, do not torment me. Ooh, Jesus knew what's up. Um, for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bounds and draw, and be driven by the demons into the desert. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? And he said, legions, for, the, for many demons have entered him. Y'all, that guy was super duper lost, right? He was lost. We would have just assumed him, put him away. He is crazy and good for no society for the rest of his life. But guess what he did? He understood running to Jesus was his answer. Amen. You, can you even imagine what those demons were doing, um, trying to pull him back? They were breaking out of chains and shackles. They really could have done anything. But he saw Jesus and he ran to him as fast as he can. The, he was, those demons were not strong enough to withstand the presence of Jesus. So no matter what you're going through, no matter what you've dabbled in, no matter what kind of cray-cray life you're living, God is more than able. Amen. Amen. As, child of, as children of God, we are protected. We have the Holy Spirit. If you're saved, if you're truly saved, we are, our lives are secure in him. But there's also blessings that we aren't getting and peace that we're not living because we've opened up ourselves to some demonic stuff in our lives. Um, so really the only thing you have to worry about is if you've opened a door, if you've invited the enemy in. If you've given him a foothold of any kind, he has legal right to be there. So we're all wondering, why is this chaotic? Why can't I get ahead? Why every time I get $1,000 in my bank, it goes away before I even get to use it? There's, there's, there's legal rights that these demons have over our lives through what we allow in. Isn't that scary? I have another story. It's really good. God dropped this to me. Okay, a couple years ago, Pastor Eric and I, well, I wanted the goats. I wanted some goats, and I thought they would be just so fun for our grandchildren. They would just play. We, we all, we live on a farm. And um, he did not want anything to do with these things. So when I was reading the list of how awesome these goats were and how to take care of them, how to feed them, and what it was going to take to be goat owners, there was one line that I did not read to him because I knew it would just be bad. I kind of feel guilty about that, but that's that's what I did. I'm honest. We all fall short of the glory of God, y'all. I wanted these goats for my grandkids. So what happened was the one line said, if one drop of water could get in between the fence, 
that gate, that goat can get out of the gate. Lo and behold, every single Sunday, we'd be driving, getting ready to go to church. There's our billy boats. There's Drake. We'd see them all over the place. And it always happened on a Sunday or when we're dressed really nice or when we finally get to work, we'd get a call. We have to go all the way back home. Um, those goats were everywhere. We'd get calls from our next door neighbors and the people in the back pasture, come get y'all's goats. People were getting angry with us. So we had to get rid of those goats. But the Lord showed me that's how easy it is for Satan to get in to our lives. One tiny piece of that drop, we allow him in and he can take hold of what doesn't belong to him, right? All right, we're going to continue through this list. Um, some of this might be obvious to you and some of it may not be obvious to you. I'm a lifelong learner. I remember I was 22 when, I, when our pastor Dominic Avello, he taught us of this and I was so mad. I just bought this crystal. It was $15 at the flea market and it was gorgeous, matched every one of my outfits. And from the stage, he told me crystals were wrong. I was mad. All right, but here we go. Um, let me continue through this list. Okay. How about the New Age movement? I hate to say this because I know a lot of Christians are caught up in it because of the progressive Christians. They're changing our Bible. They're changing the word. They're making it fit them and not fit what God says. And we can't change the Bible to fit us. We need to change to fit the Bible. Amen? So a lot of people that, that I even speak to, they're getting confused. So if you're a carnal Christian... You're gonna, the, the days ahead of you are gonna be hard because you're not gonna recognize the word of God, the true word of God, compared to what they're making up and how they're changing out the word. Um, TikTok, you guys, if anybody's on TikTok, you have to be so careful. I was on there and I was watching this one guy who's telling you how to heal yourself. And I was like, oh, this is great. Next thing I know, he has a commercial that's saying, have you yet learned to astro project for your healing? And I'm like, astro project for my healing? What is he talking about? And it was on Christian TikTok. There is so much lies going on in there. And Christians that are carnal, who don't know the word of God, who's not in there, that just, oh, my, my you know, Sunday school teacher taught me this when I was four and my uncle uncle told me this when I was 19 and that's how they collected the word of God that is not it you have got to get it for yourself you have got to get in the word and you have got to know it because Satan is a roaring lion waiting to see who he can devour um, listen to this it says Genesis 4 7 it says the enemy is crouched down at the door waiting to leap into your life same thing as that drop of water same thing we cannot afford not to have the word of God the true word of God in our lives amen Amen. All right, here we go. I skipped around a little. Forgive me. I'm not a professional, y'all. Um, all right. So there's a lot of spiritual stuff in the New Age movement inside of the progressive Christians, what they're saying, and we need to be careful. It's a warning for you, for your children, to know your stuff. All right. How about yoga, the yin-yang sign, the peace sign, crystals. Guys, people have crystals all over, their, all over the place. A healing for this, a healing for this. The only healing we need is the healing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> How about the sage? We see and we hear um, Christians walking around and, and using sage to get the evil out of their atmosphere. Give me a break, you guys. Those demons see you. Oh, here we are getting demon spirits out. They're like, let's go over to the Smith's house. We're camping out there. You know, you're, it's an invitation when we use stuff like sage and have these open doors. Um, dream catchers. Um, that's Native American stuff. We're not supposed to have that. They say that they will cancel out evil spirits. Guess what? They will welcome Welcome, evil spirits. Those dream catchers aren't for good dreams. They say it's for, oh, I'm going to have good dreams. It's not. It's from the pit, okay? How about African mask and Halloween decor? Has anybody ever done, like, a lesson on the jack o the simple, cute, adorable jack o lanterns and where that originated from, the ancient Druids and how the Catholic Church has ruined almost all of our holidays, and we need to be careful how we celebrate them. We go and we get, like, uh, tombs and goblins and skeletons, and we do our lawn with them, and then we put them up in our attic for a year we're wondering why is there so much aggression in my house it's because we have these evil things that have attachments to this stuff um okay horror movies do you guys know that the same power like when you're watching TB tbn and you get healed through it that transferable power well the demonic side has it too those spirits are demonic when you go to the movie theater you you might be bringing something else home that you didn't intend right they consult the occult to make those movies not only that, we need to watch what we're hearing and what we're seeing and what we're making. Why do you want to be afraid when God is, when Jesus is not fear at all, right? 
Amen. <laughs> Harry Potter books and movies. You guys, those movies, that they come straight from the pit of hell. They are created in the depths of evil. It's all witchery, war, like sorcery and demonic stuff and then we wonder when our kids leave our house at 19 why did why do they not see anything different between god's power and the yucky power of evil stuff because we've exposed them so much to hollywood and that kind of gross stuff um we need to watch that cartoons we were watching sophia the first the girl was doing an incantation up in there um kids toys read the back of those of the cartons when you buy toys for your kids and just see how they're trying to make your kids pretend and role play for that kind of stuff dungeon Engine Dragons, that is role playing. No place for the Christian. The Magic Eight Ball. Pokemon. Do you know that Pokemon means demon in your pocket? And here we are running around and collecting for our kids. Y'all. Even adults. Adults are driving around collecting those Pokemons. Hee. All right. Demonic and, and violent games. We know that. We don't need to go even go there. Music. What are our teens listening to? We're sitting in the car listening to it with them. If you even went and sat in their bedrooms and read, I did this with my son, and we went and we read, the, he was embarrassed. He was humiliated. He knew the music he was trying to listen to was not good. We need to be parents over them. We're accountable for their souls. TV, I just say shut it off. We don't need, we, you, you know how much more reading you can get done in the Word of God. Thank you, girl. Um, it's true. We think it's impossible, and it's not impossible. We can have a life without that coming through. Um, statues of Buddha and like that evil eye or how about um, angel worship even religious things can have attachments to it that people don't think about I threw away Eric's prayer child that we got from from Israel I just did not feel right to me he don't, he don't know that yet we worked hard to find that for a good price but it's been out of the house for a few years now um, but anything that's created for idolatry or to, to worship any other religion, we don't need to have that inside of our house. Listen to what Levit Leviticus 26 one says. Do not make idols or set up carved images or sacred pillars or sculptures sewn in your land so you may worship them. I am the Lord your God. Amen. That's the Bible. That's not me. That's what God says. Rosary beads, you guys. Don't be deceived. That's not even in the Bible. I know that's hard for Catholics to hear that, but it's not even in the Bible. Um, Freemason, pledges, sororities, fraternities, secret societies. Maybe you um, smoked or popped something illegal. That's giving the demon the demonic legal right into your homes. And you can't you can't pick what spirit comes in your house. They can come any which way. We all, we live in Florida. I heard this. It was good that if you open up your door in Florida, and you're not saying what bugs can come in your house. Any old bug can come inside of your house, right? Same things with those spirits. We're not. It doesn't. Who knows what's going to come in and torment our our home and our house? Um, how about getting drunk? We know drinking is not a sin in the Bible, right? It's not. But it even says it does a, a heart Mary. But the next day, it makes you sick as a dog, right? I don't know about you, but I, I, if I drank, I don't think I'd want to sit down and read my Bible. I don't want to get really legalistic about it. But something that's a depressant, I don't need in my life. Something that, brains, that kills brain cells, I definitely don't need in my life. Amen? Um, you know, and I think every alcoholic started with one drink. And if something's called spirits, why do we want it? Except the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We don't need it, y'all. All right, here's some, another little category about hidden sins, things that only you know about. Well, of course, you and God know about. Um, porn. We need to remember our eye gates, our ear gates are the gateway to our soul. What you watch, what you see matters. Um, romance novels, the ones with Fabio on it, ladies, that, that's an open door for the evil's evil to infiltrate you. If that makes you mad right now, when I say that, you may have a stronghold, and it is not worth it. We need to be holy and set apart. Don't give the demons any, any area in your life. Um, being promiscuous, you got to burn that bed. You need to repent. You need to run the other way. And you know what's really good? I remember reading this when I was really young. The first time I ever did a study about um, being faithful or unfaithful in your marriage in the Bible really set something in my heart. I don't ever look. I don't ever want to, and I don't say that lightly because I know we all can fall short of the glory of God and none of us are exempt, but it scares me when I counsel people who have done that and just knowing the curses that they have opened up inside of their life and the strongholds and the areas that you can come back from it for sure because God is sovereign, but whew, I do not want none of that, amen? Masturbation, y'all, that's entertaining demons. 
Whatever you do in your bridal chambers is sinless, is beautiful. God calls it blessed. But if you, well, you and your partner are one, and when you go off and you do something on your own, that's something that doesn't belong to you. It belongs to both of you. So just know that that is entertaining demons, and we don't need to be part of that. Overeating. Gosh, guys, we're Americans. We celebrate everything with food. We're happy we eat. We're sad we eat. But the Bible calls that gluttony, and it's wrong, and we need to turn from it. Lying, stealing, cheating, gossip, cussing. You guys, you can pray for me. When I first got saved, I was set free. I did not cuss. I grew up in a house where even saying the word uh, quiet was a bad word. If we had a tone, we'd say, quiet. Oh, we shoot, boom, come hit us, right? So I got out of that house and every other word, I couldn't express myself unless I had three F words in it. And then I turned around and got saved. Just, I just learned how to cuss. And then I got saved. And God took that from me. And I was so thankful because I was like, that's going to be a really hard one not to do, you know. Um, they got me to cover up, but not cuss. I don't know about that. Um, but the truth is, is that um, it sneaks in and it sneaks out. We got to stay on, on warfare about these things that are just common for, oh, we're, we gossip. Mm -mm. He says we won't enter the gates of heaven. We need to make sure we hear the Holy Spirit and that conviction over our heart when we even say things if it's not pleasant about somebody else. Um, all right, the, this one makes me really sad. It's some doors that we may have opened that were out of our control, that they happened to us, and it's unfair. Satan does not fight fair, y'all, and he kicks us when we're down. And this one just breaks my heart, um, but here's the list. It's uh, child abuse, right? When there's anger and strife and trauma inside of a house, that child doesn't deserve the, the, the strife, much less a demonic uh, spirit coming in there, but Satan uses that opportunity to torment them for a lifetime. Um, rape. Um, rejection, incest, divorce, um, big lies, lies. I've, I've heard a story where someone did not know that they were adopted, and when they found out that lie, their whole world, they just rebelled, and just uh, the enemy had a field day in their lives. Um, curses being spoken over you, your parents saying, or someone, an uncle and aunt saying that you're no good, and you're not going to amount to anything. We need to cancel them out, and as hard as it is, we need to learn how to forgive, and I know that's not easy when it's an injustice, and it's had nothing to do with us, but Man, the power that we have when we forgive the unforgivable. And one thing I always put in my head is I'm like, ah, oh, the Lord says he's going to put a table before my enemies just for me. And it really does make it a little bit easier. Not that I have enemies. I really try hard not to. But I, I think that helps me. Or the hot coals on their head. Ooh, watch out. All right. Um, all right. So let me see where I'm at. How about some super innocent stuff? This, this me and Eric learned a long time to stop a long time ago to stop doing. When we traveled, we'd bring back artifacts everywhere we go. We'd bring back gifts for everybody. And then we learned that some of these things are not okay. So pray about what you bring back from other countries. We were on a cruise a couple years ago and I bought some stuff on the street that were like these cute little Moroccan dolls. They were all homemade, all this gorgeous fabric. They were so cute. And I brought them in. And then for two nights, I'm embarrassed to say, it literally took me two days to realize why at night I was like tossing and turning and I like not to sleep because I get a lot of cleaning done, but I was like tormented. I was, every time I'd flip flop, I'd, I'd have a bad thought or a bad dream when I'd fall asleep and I'd wake up and it was just like just a lot of aggression. Two days later, I realized it's those stinking Moroccan dolls. I opened up our balcony and threw those things into the sea and it, but it was crazy. Like I should have known better and I didn't. So that's why it's important that we always discern and walk in the Lord and ask for his discernment when we have things that come into our lives. Okay. Um, how about antiques or garage sale shopping or going to Goodwill and bringing stuff inside of our house and now all of a sudden you're, you can't sleep, you're having nightmares, your kid's wetting the bed, um, you're tormented inside of your home. It could be something that we allowed inside of our house. Amen? All right. Um, how, this is very innocent too. How about gifts that people give you? Some with good intent and some without. As pastors, we get a lot of gifts. One time we had gotten a gift. It was a cross. It was all wrought, wrought iron. But in the middle, it had a demon face in it. And, um, and, and I, I, know, I remember who gave it to me. Um, but I had to throw that thing out, right? Um, witches use a lot of times they give gifts to have a contact point with that person. 
And you guys, we know that um, there's actual witches that come, warlocks that come to, to Journey Church. We know who they are. And you know what? We, we pray for them. We want them to be saved. We know the power of God is more powerful than any destruction that they can pray on us. They try to become best friends with your pastors. They try to get in the lead. If it wasn't for the sermon that we actually learned from um, Pastor Kevin a couple weeks ago and how to pray for it and how to walk in it and how to use that, we could be a lost people. Thank God that we have that relationship. The devil is always on the prowl, and we need to rely on the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit alone. Amen? All right. I'm running out of time. Oh, I wasn't supposed to say that. Okay. Um, I was corrected for service, not to rush. So you guys are going to be here till 3 o'clock. No, I'm kidding. I'm going to go really fast. I'm going to go really fast. Okay. Um, familiar spirits. I think this is so important for Christians to know. When your loved one passes away, no. That when you go to the psychic or you think they're visiting you in your, in your house or they're driving with you next to your car, that is not your loved one. I'm sorry. I know it hurts. A lot of people hold on to experiences that may have happened, but that is how evil Satan is. He comes to deceive you. It, he, they are conjuring those, those um, uh, psychics. They're conjuring up evil spirits and those demons to come and deceive you. They want to take your eye off the word of God. You guys, you all know the Manhattan medium lady. Oh, so cute and adorable, right? Or that guy, I think his name is um, Tyler and he's the Hollywood medium to the stars. Shut that off. Get it away from you. Those, that's demonic. Those are familiar spirits. They can sh um, shape shift. They can sound like your loved one. They can look like your loved one. They're going to remember, oh, we were in the bathroom and this is one joke that we only knew and they brought it to us. Demonic. That's a familiar spirit that knows your past and your future a lot of times and they will come to deceive you. We need to read the word. The devil is nasty. He's evil and he is unfair. Um, He'll use anything he can to deceive us. Um, I know a lot of this stuff that I'm saying, I hope that as I was reading it that you were recognizing some of these things. We need to get rid of them. Whether they were expensive, whether they're sentimental, whether you came back from a honeymoon with them, pray about it. Ask the Holy Spirit what you should do. This is not a punishment. Y'all look sad a little bit, but it's not a punishment. It is you should get excited about having your house holy and set apart, your house set for Jesus, ready for blessings. The doors open and nothing but sweet laughter comes forth in the Holy Spirit into your neighborhood and beyond. Amen. We need to get our houses in order. All of a sudden, you'll get your sleep back, your, your peace back, that headache that keeps coming back, um, gone. Um, sickness needs to go in Jesus' name when these things leave our house. The devil is sneaky, but God is shedding a light, shining a light on it for you today for you to recognize these things are not innocent they are hindering us yes sorry you are going to be one of those christians we are called to be a peculiar people if we want to make a move in this world amen um, your joy is coming back. Depression has to leave. Broken relationships restored. Unsaved family members saved. Amen. Our house is to be holy and sac uh, sanctified, consecrated unto him and him alone. We can no longer break. We break God's heart when we break his commandment. And his commandment is to have no idols before him. All right. I'm going to run through a list of five. I don't even know what time it is. I don't I know. I'm... Does it matter, babe? Okay, I'm going to go pretty fast, but this is the important part. This is the part that I really want you guys, this is your homework to go home and do. This is something that you pray with your spouse or, or by yourself or um, with your roommate, whatever that looks like for you, and make a change in your life. Step um, Five steps to spiritual cleaning out your home. One, destroy anything not holy. You guys, pray and ask God for discernment. Get rid of it, destroy it, throw it away. If you're like me, I burn it. I burn it. Don't give it away. You don't want to give your curses to somebody else, right? Deuteronomy 7.25, it says, you must burn their, this is Bible. This is not Mary Jo. This is what they say in the Bible. Um, you must burn their idols in fire, and you must not coven the silver or the gold that covers them. You must not take it, or it will become a trap. What is Satan? He's a sneaky little thing, huh? Um, there'll be a trap for you. For it is detestable to the Lord your God. Do not bring any detestable objects into your home. It's right there. Um, for then you will be destroyed. What are we? We're not going to be destroyed. We're children of God. Um, just like them, you must utterly detest, detest such things. For they are set apart for destruction. Yee, right? 
All right, number two, pray and anoint your windows, doors, and floors, asking for forgiveness, repent, renounce, and rebuke, you guys. Pray out loud through your house. You, you sound silly, you look silly, but guess who hears you? The Holy Spirit, God hears you. He sends down legions of angels to protect you. And guess who else hears you when you're out loud? Satan. And he knows that he's defeated. Amen? Uh, so pray out loud through each and every room of your house, inviting the Holy Spirit. You know, he hates anointing oil. When we use our anointing oil, it's symbolic of the Holy Spirit's power to get rid of them. He can't stand it. Listen to what Exodus 40.10 says. It says, anoint the altar anoint the altar of burnt offerings and its utensils to consecrate them then the altar will be become absolutely holy Holla. who wants a holy holy not only holy holy but absolutely holy house amen that's right number three command every demon to leave and never to come back you guys we have to get really good at knowing how to um, bind and loose things. We bind those evil spirits and we release God's Holy Spirit. We bind curses and we, we um, loose blessings over our lives. You walk through your house and you start declaring these things and the atmosphere will change. You will take back any legal ground the enemy had. We cast them out and we plead the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, power in our lives. Amen. Number four, Dedicate your home to the Lord. This house belongs to the Lord. Rebuke every single evil scheme, anything that, that Satan had upon you. Um, ask the Holy Spirit to remind you what you've done to allow these things. Renounce them. Ask for forgiveness over bitterness, of unforgiveness, anything in your life. You know, you guys, we always point to other people who's done wrong to us, but we know that we've done things. Sometimes it's our fault, our part, that we need to go and ask someone for forgiveness and ask someone to... The power that you have when you actually do that, God's just waiting for us. That's why he tells us to pray for our enemies because there's so much blessing. When we stop, die to our pride and start living how God calls us to live. Number five, ask the Holy Spirit to fill your house and everyone in it. Pray, lay hands, anoint your children, anoint their pillows at night, anoint your husband's pillow. You know, um, I, their lunch boxes went out. Everything had an oily cross on it, you know. Um, no one's coming out of my house. I and learn how to warfare and uh, anointing oil prayer over our homes and, and declaring that this is the house of the Lord is so powerful. Um, amen? All right. Guilt and shame is not from the, is, is, guilt and shame is from the enemy. There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus, right? Satan wants to keep us from being set free. Our sin separates us, right? When you're sinning, you're not coming to church. When you're sinning, you're not going to mom's house. When you're sinning, it separates us from what God has for us. And we need to like give that up and live clean in Jesus name. Um, Satan's a slime ball. We need to close every door that he tries to get in. And guys, I know this makes us sound super boring, makes us really different and makes us peculiar, doesn't it? Makes us a lot weird. I'm not going to lie. I try so hard not to be weird. I didn't want to be a Christian because I knew what my neighbors looked like and they were cray cray. Any I thought of being a Christian was being square and boring. I was really, really wrong. There's nothing funner than being a, a believer in Jesus Christ and watching God move in our lives and seeing the power of prayer over our children, over our houses, and over our homes. Amen? All right, so I'm not going to lie to you. Your friends are going to talk bad about you. They are. It says so in the Bible. Um, they're going to make fun of us. They're going to call us holy rollers, Bible belt, Bible boy. We've heard it all. But guess what else happens? When someone passes away in your family, who do they call? The Bible belts. When something tragic happens, they know that we know God. They know that we have a connection with him. They know. So let me tell you, they may make fun of you at Easter and Christmas behind our backs. But when rubber meets the road, they're calling powerful people in their lives. And that will be you. Amen. All right. This is where you see it. In the Bible, so you don't think I'm making it up, 1 Peter 4, 4 through 8, it says, Of course your former friends are surprised when you no longer plunge into the flood of, the, of wild and destructive things they do, so they slander you. Ouch, it hurts. Um, but remember that they will have to face God. That hurts even more. Who stands ready to judge everyone, both in the living and the dead. That is why the good news was preached to those who are now dead. So although they were destined to die like all people, they now live forever with God in spirit. The end of the world is coming soon. But what? 
what's coming? The end of the world? Um, therefore, be earnest and disciplined. No Christian likes to hear that word, but we need to be a disciplined people in your prayers. Most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other, for love covers a multitude of sin. The end of the world is coming soon. So guys, that is a mandate on us. We need to be a people about God's business. We can no longer be lukewarm. We cannot be whitewashed. We cannot be carnal. We need to be about his word and his ways. It makes us look peculiar, but guess what? This life is but a breath. It says it's a vapor and it's gone. Take one breath. <gasps> To all eternity, we get to be with Jesus if we choose right throughout this life. Not only that, but I have a huge fear since I was 12 that I was going to die young. It's, I, I rebuked that. I'm not going to do that. But um, I, always were, I was always raising my children up thinking that this is my last year. I know that sounds weird, but the truth of the matter is I always was praying that this is my last year. So everything I could get into my kids, I got into my kids as quickly and as honest. They knew about spiritual warfare when they were 10. Like my, my kids knew, knew the word. And um, it made me really nervous because I know that in our world right now, end times is coming, Right? Will I be here for it? I don't know. I don't know when it's coming. But all I know is I have children and grandchildren that need to need, need to see the word of God. They need to see it lived out. Um, earlier, we were in there, and um, Br uh, Bridget was back there saying a prayer before our service. We have prayer time. And her little kids were all sitting in the chair just looking up at their mom. And I said, Lord, that's what all of our children need to see us do. They need to see us praying and being a warfare for our children. They need to see us up, not hiding at night, reading our Bible, but having Bible time, having Bible minutes um, at home, at our dinner table, being about God's business. He means what he means. His road is narrow and he means it. So not to scare you, especially on Mother's Day, that might've come out a little hard, but my heart is to let you guys know that we need Jesus. We need to look like disciples and we need to be about God's business. Our friends might make fun of us, but who cares? Greater is he, amen. Let's stand up. If you guys wanna stand up, we're gonna say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we just thank you so much for this message. We thank you for this new knowledge. We thank you that you are equipping us here at Journey Church, Father God, that we are going to run over every single mountain. We're going to move it, and we're going to stand on top of it victoriously in the name of Jesus, Father God. We thank you that this group is covered in the precious blood of Jesus, Father God. I ask that you put an earnest desire for them to go home, clean out their homes, clean out their closets, pray and discern what they need to get rid of, Father God, that they would be about their father's business, Lord Jesus. I ask that you bless them, that this Mother's Day is a day that they will never forget, that this is where they finally get their peace back, where they finally find their joy, where they cancel out every scheme and rebuke every um, scheme of the devil, Father God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. We're thankful that you opened up our eyes, Lord Jesus. And I just pray right now, if there's someone in this room who needs to rededicate or dedicate their life for the first time to you, Jesus, we have... Um, you guys, we have prayer warriors that will be up here, that will stand in the gap, that will be praying for you, that will be believing for you, that will help you. Um, if any of the, the list came to your heart, they'll pray over that with you. They're equipped, they're fasted up, and they are um, gonna stand in the gap for you. Don't leave this place with anything attached to you any longer. Be set free in the name of Jesus. And we all say, amen. Happy Mother's Day, you guys.